All right, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy KJ, and we're doing this Art of Sound show live. We started a series last week, and we worked on some music. I don't know if you guys seen that. You can definitely look at the, uh, the archives on YouTube.com slash KSound. Today, we're working on recording, um, recording vocals, the proper way to record vocals in the home studio environment. So as you can see, I'm standing in front of a mic now, and I am using the the blue baby bottle blue. That's what I'm using. I love this mic. This is uh, roughly, it's, I, I guess it would be between the affordable and, and high end compared to um, some of the mics that are that are available on the market right now. But I love it. You know, anything blue actually is uh, sounds really good. Then I have a pop filter. Um, they make them in uh, metal, and this is actually the uh, uh, it's like a, a, a stocking texture, mesh mesh texture or whatever. And and with the what a pop filter does, it it it, it filters your voice through the mic, and it, it actually keeps the um, the P's and you know it prevents from the, the P's and the um, the plosives as as they call them. Um, hitting the mic because that could that could be uh, that could be an issue. So we put the pop filter in front of the mic here to avoid that. And the rule of thumb is to be maybe like your your pinky finger in the mic and your thumb, you know, spread them out like this, and then put the pop pop filter like this. And then supposedly you're supposed to be another ways back from the pop the pop filter. Singing in like that, but um, we're not gonna do it like that. We're gonna kind of put the pop filter just right here, and we're gonna sing on the mic like this, because the closer you get to the mic, it brings clarity in the mic. But you definitely don't want to be all on the mic like this, because it, you know you definitely don't want to do that. And if I want to show you guys how the signal, the signal flow. Definitely want to pay attention to the signal as the mic goes in through the interface that you're using. Um, you're supposed to be like maybe yellow, never supposed to be in the, in the red. So your signal, uh, you know, you can probably start off with like halfway in regards to your input levels on your on your on your mic interface. Um, yeah, so you can you can do it like that and then adjust. You know, just depending on what type of mic that you're using and um, what you're doing actually, and, and actually, it, all, it sometimes it depends on where you are in regards to um, if you're in a closed environment, uh, you know, uh, a spacey environment. So um, a lot of people they build booths that also helps with the sound. All right here, I have a a uh, this is a reflection filter by SE. Uh, I don't know if you can see that this is made by SE I like this the I think these are the first guys that, to actually come up with the design of, of a reflection filter um, I could have made my own like a lot of people I know I've seen a lot of YouTube videos a lot of people made their own but I did not get into that because this one is made differently um, with uh, the proper uh, fibers and foams and whatever else the, the, that they put in here to make to make this work properly, and as you can know, it, as you notice, there are vents in this filter right here, and and the vents act as a uh, a filter pretty much. There's another one that I was thinking to purchase, and it had uh, the back was solid. It was nothing, you know, it was a solid plastic or whatever. Um, you don't want to go for that because it creates a boxy sound. You won't want to have vents in the back. There's there's all types of them. Uh, there's some with metal metal backs, you know, little holes. You know, it still breathes. That that's the whole that's the whole idea of a reflection filter. So you're using these when when you can't afford a booth or afford to build a booth. So um, this is like um, an easy ID25. It's very affordable. Get one of these and just mount them onto your onto your mic stand, and then um, it usually comes with a 
another piece that you can actually mount your mic on. So if you can just kind of see that, so I pretty much just uh, mount this in. I actually have to tighten this, but uh, this that's pretty much how how it works. And this particular model, you can actually adjust the back. So depending on the type of mic that you have, you can adjust adjust it to come over because you know there are some mics that are actually taller. Or you know you can make it come down some. So there's like a couple of knobs on the back that you can adjust the height. And um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this down some because the vocalist that's going to sing for you guys while we go through the session um, is definitely not as tall as me. So um, the other thing is, it's very important that when the singer is singing, when the singer is singing, that the, the mic is positioned at mouth level. You don't want them to, you know, do that because if the mic is too low, you don't want them, you know, you want them to sing straight ahead into the mic. So that's very important um, because, you know, it got something to do with how the wind flows out of your, out of your system. You know, you don't want them, you know, standing, trying to reach the mic. Definitely want it mic level, mouth level. So that um, everything can come out nice and clean, quality-wise. So um, we're gonna definitely get started. Um, yeah, let's get started. Just making sure I position the. If you guys got any questions, please feel free to ask your questions. These sessions are are live. They are interactive. We can see the questions as they come in. If you are viewing us on YouTube, you can definitely um, um, click the link on the left bottom of your phone or whatever device that you're using and ask your questions, and we, you know, we happy to answer them for you. So in this particular session, we're using Logic Pro X to record the vocals. Um, I have a lot of buddies that prefer to use Pro Tools, but we prefer to use Logic, because we love Logic. So we're going to switch seats. And in the studio, we have uh, my partner, Steve. I'm going to switch the, yeah, my partner, Steve, sitting sitting behind me. This is the other producer. This is the guy that uh, started the the music and uh, um, yeah, say something to people. Hi. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Hey, everybody. Uh, just wondering if if we can hear you. I had to turn you up a little testing, bit. Testing, testing. Jimmy crack on. I don't care. Okay, you good? I just want to make sure. All right, so so basically. Right before we get started, um, let me show you guys what the signal what the signal looks like when recording when recording vocals. And this is this is uh, one of the issues that a lot of producers that I know have. They don't know when when to pull out because you know sometimes. You can't hear, and the first thing that people do is turn up the input gain on your interface, and that's not what you want to do. You want to turn up your headphone gain, and if your headphone gain is not enough power, then you, you might want to um, get into some headphones that, that, that are powered, you know, use an a, a amp to power your headphones and give you more power just so you can hear a little bit better. So you can do it like that. So I'm gonna ask my 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 vocalist to step in the mic for me, if she don't mind. And we're going to test the mic. What I usually do when I first start a session, I um, I have my artists to sing whatever song that they whatever whatever comes to the head, and I'll adjust the levels as they sing it. 
you know, just to give me a rough idea as to where we are. And then as they sing the track, along with the track, um, they um, then, gonna, then I can adjust the levels. Another thing I wanted to share was, this is what I usually do. I, 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 I'll pull back on the music. Because some, you know, if 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 your artist can't 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 hear, okay, if the artist can't hear, uh, that's usually why. And I forgot to show you guys, um, why it's important to have on the headphones a certain way because they are actually labeled left and right. So that's that's very important. Um, I forgot to mention that, but yeah, it's definitely you know when 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 artists are singing, you definitely want to make it. Make it known that they understand the left is on the left ear and then the right is on the right ear. So, and in this particular, well, in any session actually. Uh, we need to, I need to say something real quick. Too. Okay. Can they hear me? Um, can they hear me? Um, yeah. It's very important um, when you deal with singers. That they have uh, anything that could potentially anything make, that could potentially make uh, noise. Uh, we did a session one time, and um, one girl had on like two bracelets, and as she was singing, she was singing, or moving her hands, and we heard every time it clicked. You know, so you know if they have you know a jury that can like they move, and then you know the jury move with them or things like that is extremely, extremely relevant that you tell them you know remove that while they say can. Or turn their phones off, things like that. Things that could pick up, it, and if you got a good tape, you got to try to figure out how to edit that out or re-record it. So yeah, you definitely want to get them to lose stuff like that. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. I've dealt with several artists like that. They they get happy in the mic and, yeah, right. and all that, and it'd be a good take too. And it's like, wow, we got to do that over, you know. Big fail out there. I'm just saying. All right, so um, going back to my screen to show you guys like uh, what what we are looking for when we when we record vocals. Um, if you don't mind, Ashanti, you can just sing whatever whatever that comes to your head. It doesn't have to be the song, or it could be the song. I guess I can just... do the song. Right? Okay. Pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Give me the 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 peak of the song, the the chorus or. Just a reminder, song is copyrighted. Just a reminder, that's all. We got a lawyer. We will take you to court. You can use this thing to get our coins. But I'm, just, you know, I'm just, you know, keeping it real. Save us some time. <laughs> okay. Um, sovereign yeah. God, King of glory, won't you fall? In this place, oh sovereign God, King of glory, won't you fall in this place? Okay, that's good. Um, so basically, if 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 you can see, if you can see my my levels, that's that's a, that's a good level. Actually, I could I could definitely turn it up, the input gain up just a, just a little bit, but it's better to be like somewhere in the middle, in the middle here, than than it is to peak. Definitely don't want to peak. So the the next step. Did you have something you want to? I was just going to tell them, like, as far as working with your artists, then, you know, you can go into it, like, okay, are you comfortable? Like, as far as, can you hear yourself good? Can you hear yourself good? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're too close? Do you feel like you're too no. close? Because no. one thing that's very important that you want to do where your artists start at, as far as the vocalists who sing it, they kind of got to stay right there because you don't want to get... I guess I can give you a good example if you notice the difference in my wave when I'm talking right now. And if you got a track going like that, it won't be the best situation. You'll still pick it up, but it won't be clean. So, um, she sang in the studio before. This is not her first one, but I'm just going to say this for those who don't know. It's like, why you sing? Got to stay in that same exact space and, you know, make your movement make your movement as limitless as possible. Right. Wow, 
Right. Wow, that's 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 another great point. Um, if I can add to that, and the reason why, uh, I mean, it wouldn't really be natural to say, um, not 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 uh saying what you said was wrong because it's it's unnatural to get in the mic and sing and not really feel it. If you're really feeling it, it's gonna be hard to do that. But however, if um, you know, just stay like in the proximity of the mic. Like you know, if you can see where she's positioned now. You definitely want to stay in that in that range, and you know you, you don't want to go too crazy. You don't want to sing it because it'll become a problem when when it's time to mix the song. You know what I mean? And, and now we we fighting frequencies. You know when when, when we dealing with you know when we get to the mixing aspect. You know and we trying to you know some 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 spots in the songs is like clear and clean and it's got that crisp sound and then you know as the singer move back and forth. Then you get dull areas, and then you gotta try to clean that. You know, there's just a lot of things that us, you know, mix engineers get into when trying to clean the clean the vocals. So, and this is this is also to the producers and those beat makers that want to become producers. You know, you really want to look at the whole attribute of when you're actually producing. This is a this is part of the this is part of the production. It's not just you know something that we're doing for happenstance. This is you want to make sure that you got clean vocals unless, you know, you're just making tracking, I guess. You know. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to – the next step is actually – I pulled back the music just, just a tad bit because it was at zero dB. So uh, that's, I, I usually do that, you know, like I said before, to uh, allow my artists to hear her. To hear themselves versus turning the mic up, you know what I mean? Because then you, you start experiencing um, being in the red and um, distortion and things like that. So that that's a trick that I usually use. I just turn the music down. Just turn the music down. Simple as that. Turn the music down. That way your artists can hear themselves, and it won't be like a like you know like an echo issue, whatever. Because if you turn up the the, the mic past where it's supposed to be then um you you experience experience issues so we're gonna go, we're gonna visit the screen uh once more and i would say it's very important to label your tracks because as the audio comes in um it takes the labeling uh configuration that you set if you save it, if if you, if your vocals or audio or whatever you recording, if it says audio, then it's gonna say audio one, two, three, four, five, six, and then when you need to retrieve something, say you record some vocals and then you delete something, and then you need to get you know retrieve them back. The way that you find them will be uh, it will be quite difficult trying to find vocals unless you have time to go through each each audio, you know, audio one, then two, then 22, and 23, you know what I mean? So you definitely want to label it. Um, what, what, what would you say the first thing we'll work on? Is it the verse or the or the, uh, the hook? Uh, we're going to work on the hook. The background, and this is a... I just put, choose to go this way just because um, it's a lot easier when you got a vocalist singing and... Uh, the background is already laid because it's easy for them to push. You know, it gives them that push that they need. Like, you know, if you do it, and that's even in all genres of music, if, even if it's, you know, hip-hop or R&B, just, you know, having that, you know, line or whatnot, you know, pretty much opens up the door for them to be able to, uh, you know, sing to their fullest potential. Right. All right, so I'm going to play the track, and I'm going to try to find... Wait, 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 where we gonna record first? Can can you hear the music? Okay. This is the verse, right? Yes, that's the first one. Okay, I started recording. All right, so I should jump a little uh, further in, in the song. It's like, uh, 
Right there, no. Right there, no. That's too. That's way too far. Way too far. Okay. right there. Okay. The other important thing that you want to keep in mind is actually labeling everything. We did not label. So we are looking for it now. Okay. Say like right, right there. Okay, bear with us, guys. We just trying to find where we want to start. Okay, so also it's a little bit before. It's still up in the section. I think it start right here. Right there. A little bit more before that. That's the last one. So, so what did you do that? Was it? I started at 30. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that, guys. All right, here we go. Bring us back to you. 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 Okay. 
Oh, you fine. You're fine. So you do the same thing. Is that household? Household. Household. All right. So um, we're doing backgrounds right now, right? Yep. So that was the household. So what I'm gonna do is, is duplicate that track. That way it keeps the same setting. Arm this, and we're gonna do the same thing. Kind of like uh, give it a stereo, a stereo effect. Um, some sometimes uh, I have people to ask me, well, can't you just copy and paste that? Um, no, because it, it'll create a phasing issue. So, um, to give a, a true stereo, you know, if you do it again, it's always like a some milliseconds, you know, off. So that's what gives it that that true stereo width. So that's the reason why we stack the same thing. You know, however many times we want to, but in this case, we're just gonna do everything twice, just for the time's sake. And another thing, the more you stack it it creates the difference in the blend that you want. Like uh, if you stack it and you want like, you know, big ensemble choirs type, then that's the more time if you want to stack it, even if it's one single singer. If uh, you want it more groupish or, you know, just a small harmony, then, you know, the, you know, the least you can stack it. And still make sure you got a good clean sound and it'll come out pretty sweet. Cool. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do another take. Um, do the same thing that you did before. Um, you say this is alto. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just gonna label it alto two, and I have to go back and label this one. I didn't know exactly what we was. I probably spelled it wrong, but here we go. Bring us back to you. 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 Okay. Cool. Alright, so what I like to do. What I like to do Sometimes I like to create some type of um, pre-mix, yeah, pre yeah a, a pre-mix on fly, you know, just just to make it sound sweet at, in, in the artist's ears and kind of like bring, you know, bring some to the left and some to the right, just so everything won't be crammed down the center because what will end up happening is you will experience distortion. this distortion sound and you'd be wondering like, okay. I recorded everything like I was supposed to, you know what I mean? I, I you know, I have the levels correct and nothing is really um distorting in regards to the levels. So when you play everything back cuz I have had sessions where it uh it would be maybe 50 vocals. But if they all down the middle, they're going to sound distorted. But they were all, you know, um they were pretty much Around the um, the you know, I would say the negative uh, maybe five, negative five dB. You know, somewhere around that between negative five dB and negative one point five or something like that. Just you know, give or take of what we're we doing or how the um, the recording engineer recorded. So, so essentially, everything as far as signals come in correctly, but you got all of them going at the same time. So, so usually I just bring them down, bring them back some, you know, the, on, on the on the actual channel. And next we're gonna go into uh, soprano or tenor. Um, which one you feel more comfortable? Okay, so we're gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna label, label that tenor. Tenor one. Arm that. 
Okay, you ready? Off like like timing wise. Oh, key. Oh, key. Okay. Bring mm -hmm. us back to you. Bring us back to you. Bring us back. It's actually right in a different key. <laughs> <laughs> It is. I mean, it may sound crazy. For those uh, who were tuned into the show last week, this is the part why it was, uh, we talked about uh, understanding the notes and the keys that people be in. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it in a negative way. I'm saying because we actually highlighted that last week. Um, definitely, as a producer, you definitely want to be able to identify whether, you know, they sing in the right chord or whatnot. Definitely makes a major difference. Right. Definitely, definitely. Ready? That's what I gave you. I'm sorry. You gave me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I made a mistake, everybody. <laughs> Are uh, you ready? So, do you want to pick it up or do it all over? I was going to say, let's listen to it to see if we can pick the whole thing up. Or, uh, okay. Into music. Bring us back to you. Bring us back to you. Bring us back to you. Bring us to you. Yeah, I was gonna say that you go Just uh, play the uh, vocals. Oh, you, we just fixing one, one, no. one error. Or? No, we are uh, doing the whole thing. Okay, I'm just gonna let her practice it with it real quick. Okay. Um. 
not really sure if, if any of you guys experienced this, but this is another tip I can share. Uh, if you want your artist to sing along, if you are armed and you play and you hit play, and you're not going to hear it. So I unarm, take off the R and hit the, the, the thing that look like an I. This is this is the um the monitor so they can actually sing along with what's there. slightly you're um, moving just a little bit too much and uh, the second two were right but the first two were uh, you're moving just a little bit too much you were going like when you were saying bring us but he was going up just a little bit too high so let's uh, practice those real quick yeah that's the first thing the second and then the second changes I believe that's right Bring us back to you. 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 That sounded much better. Okay. All right, so we made you record. Here we go. Bring us back to you. 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 Cool. All right, so we can do that, the same thing. Wait, hold on one second. Um, somebody texted me and said when she's singing, um, we're getting feedback on the show. Oh, we're getting feedback. Uh, we don't like feedback. Feedback is not a part of the session, nor is it good. I appreciate that person that texted in. Let us know if we're getting feedback. And viewers, if y'all want to comment or anything, let us know if any questions on hand. We'll definitely take time out and ask them to the best of our ability. I think be anything about this session. They might be getting feedback from, from your mic. When I turn me down and just, or you can, you can actually turn me off and. Oh, I could just adjust you from. Right here because you know your mic is. Right now. No, I can't. Just turn Am I too much in your space? And if you guys see. If you guys see what's going on, we are because we're experiencing feedback. We're we are um, rearranging, and the type of mic that Steve is using right here is a one directional mic. It's a direct mic, so hey, basically it's gonna hit the, the the everything that's in front of it. So he can actually just turn his mic the opposite way of where everything else is coming in and, it, and it's supposedly not affect and I guess it it also depends on the gain on it if the gain is high or hot then it, it definitely create it create an issue I could probably turn mine down too one of the things that you always want to uh, with um, the, 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 the mic that I'm using, it's also a dynamic mic, and um, it 
like this is getting real technical, but those of you who are actually into this will really understand this. If you ever, well, some people don't know why you're picking up a whole lot of stuff. Singer sing. It's um, singing. when singers sing in the studio, they're singing through a mic, and the mic has what's called a polar pattern. The polar, pa the polar pattern, pretty much is the range of that's open to show how much can come in. So this particular mic, when you're using dynamic mics. They have wide polar patterns, so like it picks up from here as well as here. So it picks. That's why it's more circle when you sing it into condenser mics, most studio mics. The polar pattern is usually in the front, and it doesn't pick up the back. That's why if you uh, most mics, um, as you can see, I'll just pick up one. You guys here. Um, this right here. Uh, which camera is it showing me? It's showing it in this one. You can show them right there. That particular mic has, it has something to specify. I'm just going to pick up a couple of mics. And this is a, a Rode NTK mic. There's only one polar pattern on here. There's no switches or anything on here. And there's a tube in here. Uh, Same thing. You can show them the tubes. <laughs> if you, I don't know if you want to show them. I mean, it's, it's, it's a tube in here just to make the mic warm. <laughs> we, 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 we weren't trying to get go too technical. Especially with the mic in situation. But this right here, show them. And these signs, these signs and symbols and things and whatnot. Um, Same mic, just has the uh, the shock filter, the shock mount on here. This actually comes with the mic. So they both the same same mic. Yes, they are. I thought that was the I thought that was the N1. I didn't know that. No, the N1 is like slightly lighter and. He got an N1 around. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 another it's another role, mic. That's why I was like, you giving me two of the same mics. This right here. Uh, yeah, this is a this is an AKG Perception mic right here, um, the 420 series. And this one actually has uh three three polum patterns on here in the front. There's the uh the uh, figure eight. There's the Omni, and then there's the uh, uh, I can't think of the last one. Uh, cardioid. Yeah. And then on the then on the back. There are there are more switches on the back. There's a a, a bass roll off. I don't know if you guys can see that. Probably not. But there's there's uh, two switches on here. You know, when your vocals come straight in, that means it comes straight in. Everything everything that's coming in, or you can roll off the heavy. You know, if the vocal's got a, a heavy bassy type thing, um, you can roll it off. And then there's a another switch back here, uh, controlling the um, the actual input, like you know how loud, how hot, how hot the mic is. It's zero dB. Then there's a negative twenty dB. So if you got a vocalist that's you know barely can hear, um, you can definitely uh, switch it to zero. And if you you have somebody, you know, the opposite. If, if there's somebody that's um, really, really, all, you know, they voice is heavy, then you, you know, you switch it to negative 20 dB. You know what I mean? So that's pretty much how that goes. And the uh, the uh, the figure eight means that you can record in this way, and there's another person that can record in here at the same time simultaneously. So that's what the configure eight is like a look like an eight on here and then the um, the cardioid is just straight in down the middle and that's what this mic is. This is straight in anything that's positioned in front of the mic and this one is the same way. Positioned in front of the mic, but if you talking behind the mic you're not gonna hear much. And then it was another mic you had over there like them right there that AKG. Right, um, there, right by the keyboard. Yeah. Cardioid. And this also has um, well, this you know most people know this about um, as pencil mics because they look like pencils or whatever. This is a possession um, 150. This usually uses on drums or acoustic guitars. Yeah, you can use it for anything. I wouldn't use it on vocals, but you know, background because the way yeah that polar pattern is picked up, it picks up so angrily. Yeah, so it's like. To, in order to, like, you can't sing in because it's almost like a sphere the way the polar pattern is made. Right. So, like, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. 
it's, it's if he like, come more from it's it's like so like the way he the way yeah. he's pointing now. So like the way he the way he's pointing now, it would pick up like now it'll pick up what's in front of it now. Yeah, like right here. Yep. And um this one also has the um switch on the back as well. Um because I use these mainly for drums, is that negative 10 dB because if you have it set at zero you definitely gonna it's gonna sound like you cracking the mic yeah <laughs> so you don't want to do that so we don't have we don't have all the mics in the world but that's pretty much the basics the basis of a, of a mic right yeah we got but that's just real important yeah we want to make sure we got yeah if you don't have uh them singing directly to where the polar pattern is, yeah, then untrue sound. you'll get a untrue sound, yeah. almost like a backdoor. No, if like, you, ever, you ever talk something to somebody? No, if you ever, ever you ever talk something to somebody knocking on your door? Who is it? You know how they sound back there. That's the type of have on your actual uh, frequency you gonna have on your actual project, which will suck. Yeah. Unless you just want to be creative and try something new and hope that not go. And then you know the the shock filter in case we have anybody wondering like what the heck is that? Well, the shock filter, not the shock, the shock mount. I'm sorry, the shock mount is mount that keeps the mic in place for those people that are extra enthused about the material. Right. Like you catch a rapper, I'm 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 bad. I'm a gorilla. I'm a, you know yeah. Kind of like accidentally this, hit it the be jumping in. It yeah. goes back to what we were talking about earlier, how a mic is, um, as y'all can see, somebody moving, as y'all can see, and if, you know, these are very small just, uh, pieces, so just uh, have them coming through, that's how it'd be without a shot mouth. But if you got a shot mouth, they can jump up, and it's still recording. It's almost the same concept as uh, a car, you know, with suspension system. If... Um, if your suspension system on your car um, wore out, shocked or whatever, you you'll definitely hear. It. You will feel everything, every little bump. Wait, will, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you 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 definitely you feel see, everything. You can see how he did that too, because he's shaking yeah. it. Mike is not. As you notice, the mic is not moving. The the. It looked like it's moving, but it's more so the pop filter, but the mic is actually not moving. So can you shake it again so they can yeah. see it? Um, almost, almost like um, um, a camera as well. Like that, there's a there's a feature on there to keep it from um, you know, jittery. I can't remember the, the feature. Um, but yeah, it's actually it's actually on here. It prevents the camera from moving so much. St st uh, stabilizer, that's what it is. I had to grab my camera. It's been a while. It's a stabilizer on the camera. So, like, if you're taking the shot and and you you know you can't really, you know, if you have the stabilizer on it, it is it, is actually more of a smooth move versus a, a jittery. So that's what this is. It this you know the shock filter, the yeah, shock mount for. I was gonna say it's actually one on the mic that she's singing on as well. Yeah, yeah. We make sure the shock now for a mic like this, you don't need a shock mount. Yeah, because it's not even designed for that anyway. So walk around and talk with karaoke, church, bar. You can yeah. talking it like this and hold it, you know. Straight standard mic, you know. That's and, and you can actually record great vocals in that. I've I've seen some people do it. I've, I've, I've been in a big studio where he actually used a Shure SM58 and um, just just put a, a pop filter in front of it and it sounds beautiful. Do that, so. I mean, yeah, I've That's seen it. some people do that. So I mean, I won't do it, but I have seen it done. You know, in case you know the budget is is a concern, you know, you could definitely do that. Or you could just say your coins and get your. I I would suggest that too. So I I think the rule of thumb in recording. Um, great vocals. A lot of people spend money in trying to um, get all the latest equipment and expensive stuff. I think the most the most money should be invested in the great mic, and, and that's very important. And also, you really want to have options because you got to keep mind. Uh, my voice is not like Miss Ashanti's voice. 
So like hello. when I talk, say hello real quick. Hello. hello. My voice can hear me say hello. My voice is a lot heavier. He use so like he couldn't use the same setting if I was singing like about bring us back to you know that wouldn't work for that actual project. I mean, given I I'm not the greatest singer, I'm not the worst singer. Like we ain't gonna talk about that because that's not the show is about. But if no, I'm serious. I'm saying. For real, so you really want to have options. You want to be able to, like the mic that we use, and um, this particular mic is a, it's a good, clean mic that has a lot of clarity to it. The mic that he uh, had before, it's a, um, it's a tube mic, so that tube brings it in more warm, so it kind of gives it a different feel. That's more for, in my opinion, either a soulful singer or somebody who who's real airy, breathy, you know, because that tubeness, you know, it takes that, you know, behind the breath and kind of makes it more rich. So, and, you know, when you get into mic and it's a lot of different options. And really, a lot of it goes with the vocalist. So, okay. There was a whole lot about mic. But, okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we we, we on the subject of uh, recording vocals. So, you know, I think those are definitely great. Great knowledge to share. We're gonna to try to record maybe a couple of couple of more takes, and then um, we'll be wrapping things up. Um, taking any questions if anybody has any questions. Um, not trying to um, um, prolong. You know, don't want a real long video because I don't want to lose people's interest. But um, although you guys may have heard of feedback. In the mic, I think what we showed you guys was, uh, I think I think it was great what, what we what we showed you guys so far. You know the whole concept of mics and what they do and what to look for, and we still getting feedback. Uh, I can just. Okay. Mic check one two. Mic check one two. Testing. We want to thank our viewers. Mic check. Viewers. Mic check. Concern for being in concern. Let us know. We're doing this for y'all. Yeah, that's very that's very important. We're doing this for y'all. Help y'all. So it's our way of giving back. Um. Yeah. We we apologize for the. For the um, mic check one two one two three one two one two three. It's better, so okay. That's what okay. Um, okay. Um, wow. Well, let's let's yeah, since we already in it, let's 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 try to record a, a couple more. So we got we got two altos, one tenor. We didn't talk so much about it. We got we, we actually um some of that I want you to point out too. We got show them the waves of what let them see we got. The waves are. Let them see how clean the waves are. It's not all spiked up and let them know things that could potentially be a problem. Yeah. So I'm gonna use the graph the um the waveform zoom just to zoom it in a little bit more. The first one is the actual the actual music. Um, and then this one is the vocal. These are all the vocals down here. Usually I'll color code them, but just to show you right quick is what it looked like. The music was bounced a certain way. Um, kind of loud, I guess. We use a, a compression and... Um, so so it looks like this if 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 I can zoom in you know so this is what you don't want when you got vocals vocals down here it's not hot and you you know music should never look like the top the vocals yeah I, I mean it's not that bad but as you can see as you can see up here um I wish there was a way I can kind of like zoom in right there, but at, up here at this um, 
Wait a minute. I may have to show my entire desktop just so you guys can see my mouse because. Okay. All right, now, for the music, right at the top, it's like it's like a cutoff, you know, like a cutoff right here. But the vocals right here, I'm more so in here. And usually my vocals will be recorded just a tad bit hotter than this, but this is fine. This is totally better than it being like this at the top, you know, totally spiked like that, like Steve was saying, because if there is distortion in the in the audio that can all cannot always be fixed. Um, KJ got this thing that one of the viewers said. Yeah, yeah go ahead. One of you said, I think I went to Simeon with it. What, what is his name? Oh, really? <laughs> what What is his name? Gary. 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 Okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. I, I, I probably have. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. Probably if I if I could see, I, fa faces are more familiar to me than names. I don't, I don't. I just thought that was funny. That that's what they um, text me. Oh, that's cool. You know, that's. They, say they, they went to Simeon. I definitely went to Simeon. I graduated in '01, so yeah. That's what's up. All right. Well. Let's see if we can um record this last tenor tenor part tenor and you know and and we have we have way more vocals to 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 record what we just want to show you guys the process of recording vocals and um yeah are you you, you hear that delay now that's probably our cue to stop no I heard it the whole time. I appreciate you enduring the the delay. Yeah. So. No, because you be able to do it without. Like, this is you. You'll be able to definitely hear all the vocals next week when we go into the mixing process. So you're gonna be a professional. Right now we just more so. Um, this is definitely just to show you the process and how it's done. You know, look at the. you'll definitely be able to. You know, look at the different archives. Is you know when the series is over, and they pretty much definitely take concepts and techniques that help you. Is my mic even on while I'm talking? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But yeah, you yeah you coming yeah. through? Yeah. But yeah, so um, this is very rough. You'll see the difference when it's done. Yeah. Um, this is just today we are set up a little bit differently because we got. I got. To, more so internet. You know, yeah. So. Internet and um the fact that our computers are streaming as well. using cameras and stuff. So as well as um, big session. Yeah. So that's why we're getting latency and uh, feedback and things like that. But so as long as you guys understand here. what we was trying to show you guys, that's all that matters. Um <laughs> so uh basically um actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just cut this session. Um, I think we we definitely displayed what we was trying to to display. If we have any more questions, please feel free to ask your questions before we end the show. Most people, I definitely say this. We're gonna try to work on this uh, question thing because we don't understand what's wrong with the service, not us. We're not ignoring our questions, but several people they keep telling me they trying to ask questions, but they grab them to my phone like, you know. Wow. Um let me let me do this right before we end. Let me let me check the um event page. That's one thing I didn't do. The questions the Q and A actually works. I've 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 got it to work. I'm just not sure why no you know no one is able to to um So I'm gonna check the event pages just, just to make sure we ain't miss it because I definitely wanna cause that's the whole point of this 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 session just so we can help people. And if you got questions.
Okay, so I'm just gonna poke around. Let's see if I can see you guys' questions. In the meantime, while I'm looking for that, please check us out. Check check us out online on the website kshine.com. We're working on Brother Steve. His website is down right now. We changing some things around. My mama had told me to ask your sister. I was Gotta make mom happy. That's what's up. Absolutely. You gotta make mom happy. All right. Next week. All right. Next week, we'll be diving into the mixing process. As Steve mentioned before, we um, we will go ahead and finish up vocals and all the music uh, we was trying to get all the music in for this session but um, there's this it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't happen that way there's a lot of stuff going on between me and Steve we got a lot of businesses um, signing agreements new agreements um, other artists and like you know we running a couple of businesses and we trying to there's a lot of stuff going on and, and um, we couldn't really get all the music, but definitely we'll have everything for you guys next next Monday, next week. So um, for the questions that we missed, if you guys were asking questions in the event and things like that, what I would do is I can save those questions for the next time we, we stream, and I can answer those questions then, or I can answer them. Where wherever you ask those questions, you know, where, you know, we can address some of some of the issues that you guys uh, had concerns about. At the moment, I'm I'm not seeing where those questions are. If you guys are in a specific area online where you guys are asking those questions, I cannot see where you guys are at, uh, asking those questions. So um, please um, forgive me. Um, Typically, on the YouTube video itself, there is a link on the bottom, the bottom left. So if you're on your, even on your phone, or you got a tablet, iPhone, iPhone, uh, iPad, you can definitely see that link, and you just click in and get in that way. It's, it's actually a Google Plus event, and you can hit the the, the Q and A button. And that's that's how probably to do a tutorial showing people exactly where to go and how to get there. Cause in the midst of the session, we did have a lot of people that was blowing up my phone. I apologize, you guys. And I apologize. Too. Wow. I thought the link was on my page, but we got y'all next week. Apologize. But we got y'all next week. And those who missed it, you know, those that uh. You can always catch it again, you know, tell people about it. That's into this life. This is life. Yeah. That's what we do for a living. So I gave up stripping to do this. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. That that's awesome. That yes, sir. That that's what's up. The music is really moving. <laughs> As you guys can see, I'm a little jealous. So. All right, y'all. It's, it's been fun again. If you guys wasn't, and it's like this always happens to me. As I as I try to end the show, I'm watching the viewers. The numbers just climb. There's more people viewing, it, and it's like, man, okay, what else can I show y'all? But uh, it's already been past an hour, so. Um, Tune in again next week. We're 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 touching the mixing aspect, mixing the music. Everything is done live. Really, I have to go and record drums, and we bring in a bass player to. That would probably be a good thing to show people. Bass player recording in and the, the drama. Um, that might be a good one. But uh, we got to get everything in this week to show you guys. Next week, the mixing process. And 
then after that, we'll we'll show you guys when everything is mixed properly and mastered properly, that type of thing. Everything sonically sounds correct. Um, we'll show you guys how to copyright your music, where to copyright it at. There's a lot of stuff online that people have told me about over the years, and there are scams and you know to, I wouldn't do it. You know, extra fees for going connecting with another company, a third party, when you can just go straight to the Library of Congress and copyright your own music. You know what I mean? So we'll show you guys that. We'll show you guys where to go to publish. Um, pu publish your music for radio, TV, airplay, things of that nature. Discuss royalties. Royalties. We'll, we'll, we'll tap in on that. And uh, contracts. contracts. What you should Yeah, we'll, we'll touch a little bit on contracts. Um, contract is like a whole other segment, and I actually touched on contract agreements. We did a uh, music business segment on the Artist Sound Show, um, like early, early on. Yeah. You own fifty percent of that song. Yeah, yeah, we could, we could, we could tap in on different, different instances like that. And um, I'm just saying, no, it may sound funny. I'm all that is echo, but this is stuff that's all that is music, music business, like stuff you should know. And we can probably do a, um something else for that. And then we will actually um show you guys um a couple of companies we go with when when trying to get it on iTunes and Amazon, you know, actually releasing it to the public. So. You know, a lot of the stuff you can do on your own if you know what to do and, you know. Show you so. avenues how to get work as well. That's a whole nother second. That's a whole nother. Yeah. I mean, you can just throw <laughs> stuff out there like, why don't hear it? You know? Yeah, because it's like. Find out who's looking. Yeah. Wow. As you can see, this is what we do all day, every day. So it's like, when we talk, it's like a bunch of this stuff. Just, and, Come. you know, the, the ultimate goal is definitely to help, though. And one major reason why we want to help because of help other people because of a lot of stuff we had to find out through trial and error. The internet was there, but it, you know, the internet was there, but there's not, like, even when we look, you know, and, you know, YouTube and things like that, you don't see a whole lot of people that's taking out the time to show you this, you know. I remember, um, and for those people who really know about production, things like this, you might find this quite humorous. But when I was recording my first session, I didn't know there was a difference between a stereo, a stereo patch cable and a mono. I had no idea. Nobody explained it to me. So, hey, good cable on sale. Hey, let's go. Bought it. <laughs> you know, somebody, um, this guy right here. I mean, they use that on no basis. <laughs> you know, like, but I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? So, like, things like that, we had to learn the hard way, you know, learn about different lighting techniques and learn about the, like, was the investment greater or was there a way around it that I can get more for my money? You know, because, you know, a lot of times when you go to, you know, different avenues to get different equipment, you know, they don't really care if you reach your goal, they're just trying to make a sale. So they'll say, yeah, you need this. That costs. And I need this to go with this. Nah, y'all. And I need this to go with this to make this work? No, I don't need that. I need to pay $900 one time and it works. They'll sell you Pro Tools. Example, they'll sell you Pro Tools quick. If you got a good system to run Pro Tools on. I'm not knocking nobody. And I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not knocking nobody, and I'm not saying, you know, you guys will have computers, but if you don't have a computer, then... It probably wouldn't be smart about those standalone mixers. I mean, they got some standalone mixers, not suggesting that's where you go, but if that's where your money at, make it work. Right. Good stuff, good stuff. That's good stuff. Hey. You might say you logic team, you got a PC. Logic team is a great software, it's a great doll. That's going to collect dust sitting on your shelf until you get your net. We can go all night. Yeah. We can go all night. Yeah. So we can, yeah, we can go all night. But uh, we can track these vocals. Next week, y'all gonna hear what we can actually do. Next week gonna be a whole lot more because next week it'll be a whole lot cleaner because it won't be a process of us trying to 
you can show and demonstrate actual things so it won't be streaming be more so like videos like this it'll be more so focused up on a mixing and editing and things like that so for those who understand what i'm saying right now the computers will be a lot faster and everything like that so we won't run into no glitches and technical difficulties so right all right so if um if you guys make it to this all the way to the end of this video please know that that's really not how we do it you know if you was hearing feedback and things like that that's not you know how how you do it but we were just we were just really just streaming live just showing you guys like the techniques and what you should look for and that's that's really all but as far as the sound next week hopefully you know and the good thing about it you will you will like well uh next week when you actually hear what you'll be able to hear will be actually here because in the studio right now we're not getting any feedback and things like that so like we actually getting a real good clean sound and you'll be able to hear all that real raw next week you could see what effects he uses yeah um i'm not using two cameras yeah. so i we might be able to get a, a cleaner anytime i use using two cameras i can get a get a latency but all right y'all it's the artist sound show this is your boy kj and this is my partner that guy back there they call him steve i think and um uh, our lovely artist Ashanti sitting behind this brother right here. Um, definitely want to appreciate her for doing all of this. Coming out sacrificing that session. Technical stuff. But usually stuff like that pisses the artist off. He's like, latency? Nah, I'm out of here. And also, they don't want nobody to see it to get done. See, here's the But. Oh, I do want to say um, to the viewers that we got in Thailand and in Singapore and mm -hmm. Japan and things like that, Europe. just across the water, well, I couldn't swim to you. So London. But anyway, um, thank you for taking the time out. I know it's like Australia. 5 o'clock there, 6 o'clock in the morning, and you know, you're taking that time to look at what's that. It's only 919, so y'all just waking up and we ain't even been asleep. But thank y'all for taking y'all time. <laughs> I'm serious. We, we appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for the love and support. All right, y'all. We out for real.